Hey, how's it going guys? So we're gonna be doing milk testing this afternoon. The only way that we have individual cow production information is through a monthly milk test that we do. We work with the Lancaster DHIA, Dairy Herd Improvement Association. Uh, they have meters they're gonna bring out and they hook them up to all of our milkers here. Just hang right here. That meter will collect the milk from the cow, measure how much she made, and we can also get a sample, send off to a lab to check for her milk quality, fat and protein production. Some milking parlors are more advanced and they'll actually recognize a cow as she's coming in and uh, get a measurement every single milking. Uh, that would be pretty handy to have. You could have real time data. Even just once a month gives us a good idea on every cow, how she's producing. They're gonna be showing up here in a few minutes, getting set up. I'm gonna be milking this afternoon. I gotta go get some lunch and change and then we'll get started. Show you guys how that works. But we're getting started here. This is the first side of pen one. So these would be the first calf heifers. You can see the units here. Milk just runs through these and it collects a little bit as it's going the whole time. Just tell you how many pounds she made for this milking. Then she'll collect a sample out of here. This will get sent off to a lab then. They can, they can test for fat and protein and smack cell. It's pulling a little bit of milk from the whole time she's milking. That way you get an even sample. The fat might change throughout from the beginning to the end of when she gets milked out. We're milking three times a day, so this cow would be about 75, 80 pounds, something like that. We had to put one back on because she didn't milk out when I was dipping her there, so slows us down a little bit here. I'm gonna bed the stalls this afternoon, so after I get group two, we'll throw some bedding in there. It's the next day here, so we got that milk testing done yesterday. We're still waiting on the results. Should get them by this afternoon. Uh, there's a load of hay actually pulling in the driveway right now. He's behind that building. Gonna unload that off the truck. We're gonna get that chopped up later this week. And I was also looking, this is our pre-mix with some proteins and minerals. I talked about that a couple videos ago. Need to get this ordered again for later this week. And uh, I was saying how it was dusty. Some dust was floating away when we were dumping it in. That's an easy fix. You just gotta add some oil or molasses to it to cut the dust a little bit. I talked to our nutritionist about it and he made that adjustment on the mix. So next batch should be a little bit better with the dust. That'll be good. I think I'm just gonna set this hay all outside because we're gonna have good weather this week. Don't really have an empty bay. We have some soy hulls that we're still working through. This is all gonna be in the pre-mix then, but we had some leftover that we're still feeding separately. So if I stack the hay in there, then we can't get to that or I have to move that. I guess the truck's not pulling in here yet. He went to the neighbor there to weigh full and then he'll get his weight off the scales there at the grain business. So we like to feed this chopped hay. This stuff is good for uh, really just the, uh, the fiber, undigestible fiber. It kind of helps slow the feed down through the gut of the cow. Not really feeding it for the nutrition. Put some in the cow mix, a bunch in the dry cows. Uh, then also the, the heifers, the older heifers, we give them some too just so they don't have too much goodies but can still fill up and not be hungry.
My dad brought the feeding tractor into the shop. He was changing the one high-low switch in there that wasn't working. I also noticed the belt on this mixer. It's like a bulge at this spot. I guess there's something underneath it there. I'm not sure. But the belt's kind of tight. It's tighter than it used to be. I guess partially because of that, but it seems like the whole thing's pretty tight here. They were telling me that you shouldn't run it too tight. It can be hard on them. I'm gonna try to loosen it up at least. I don't know if we can get this out of here. Make an adjustment here on the sides of the belt pretty easily. I don't know that it's off center. Well, actually, it might actually, that's what it is, I think. It's out of the groove. Yeah, it's supposed to keep it in place. There's a little bit of a groove on the bottom of the belt. Yeah, there's four, and then adjust. Yeah, so we just gotta loosen these. Or maybe we run the hydraulics a little bit real slow and get it and just kind of push on it a little bit. So we got the belt centered. See the gap there on the sides, exactly the same now. And this bulge is down back in the groove just tightening the belt back up we don't want to make it too tight so we got it tightened up see if it runs good now should be good we like our conveyor on the front of our mixer it allows us to be more accurate with the exact amount of weight between groups the conveyor's weight on this thing so you got 50 pounds of the conveyor, you can inch out another 10 or 20, whatever you need, and then stop. Uh, it's just nice for running out feed rather than having a big opening on the side. A little bit more to it though, more that can go wrong and break down on you. We actually have an extra belt up there just in case we have a situation. So we're not waiting on a belt and we can get it, a new one put on and still feed cows. Okay guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Thought I should at least end it by saying something. Already got the tractor out of here, but uh... Yep, see you guys.